Rudy Fishman. You might be thinking right now, who the hell is Rudy Fishman and why do I care what he has to say? Um, but we'll get into that a little bit more later. Basically, long story short, I'm a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt and I am the owner and head instructor at M3 Fight and Fitness in Montrose, California. That's my school right here. Let's come in and check it out. All right, so in here we got the pro shop. Not too different than uh, a lot of schools that you made it into or your own school. These rash guards, MMA gloves, mouth guards, fight shorts, blah, 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 medals up on the wall. In here we got cubbies for people to put all their stuff when they come in. We got uh, you know pictures of instructors on the wall. Now this is one of our instructors fought in this show. There's Felicia O, oh, one of our instructors here teaching the women's program, world champion, pretty proud to say. Uh, laundry service, I, I think it's pretty unique. Not a ton of schools offer this. Uh, we actually wash these on site. That's just an extra way of making money. Got a shower, not so unique, but you know, I think not bad for a modest little school in Montrose, California, have our own little shower. A lot of people remark our showers nicer than their shower at home, so I take pride in that. A couple changing rooms, actually three. Nothing special, again, but you know, we have them. It's better than a lot of schools that I've been to and schools that I've trained at, where you just drop, drop trial in the middle of the room. Uh, over here we got a ton of conditioning stuff. Everything from uh, you know, agility balls to big ass medicine balls <clears throat> for doing all sorts of conditioning stuff. Uh, kettlebells, uh, dumbbells, all sorts of stuff over here. Not a ton, but I think you know, a sufficient amount for a school this size and just a, you know, a little something extra to help uh, add value to our students. Uh, your more conventional um, medicine balls here. We've got the most popular guy in the facility right here, Bob. Bow! He always can, never, never complains. I really like Bob a lot. <laughs> Perfect student. Anyway, um, doesn't have the best expression on his face though. It's kind of sourpuss. But anyway, I can't get everything right. So, uh, Double-ended bag, kind of fun. Uh, right here, somebody left one of our Olympic rings on the floor. We hang these. If you look above our heavy bags here, this is actually a pull-up bar. Uh, I can do a lot of things from this. We actually have TRX straps, so we do some TRX training here. Um, we got over here, we got not, these are not only structural poles that support the building and keep, the, keep us safe from the roof collapsing on us, they're also double as heavy bags. Again, I'm sure you've seen this stuff at other schools before. TV up on the wall, uh, more heavy bags. Uppercut back, and wow, wow, look at that one, sweet. Anyway, uh, speed bag. I'm not going to embarrass myself on the speed bag for you. Anyway, uh, come on down here. We got another TV. We uh, you know, sometimes look at videos during class, um, check out some stuff on YouTube, and teach off of that. Or... Got a couple more uh, pull up bars, a little tricky to get up to, but that's part of the fun. You got to run up and do this. <laughs> so, we're hoping someday take it to uh, master chim level and get some rock climbing stuff on the wall and some uh, monkey bars and all that. But one step at a time. We're just growing. We're only eight months old. Coming <laughs> after you, chim. Anyway, over here. We got both our heavy jump ropes. And, you know, your more traditional style jump ropes. All sorts of mitts and pads, kick shields, grappling dummies, belly pads for uh, doing our striking. And over here we got battle ropes. Brock Lesnar, I'm coming after you. Yes! Yeah! Ah, just kidding. Anyway, um, uh, anyway, that's my school. Nothing particularly awesome. You can tell I like to show it off. I'm pretty proud of it. That's because even though it may not seem like much, it's everything to me. And it's just the start of a lifelong, well, I wouldn't say lifelong, but a dream I've had ever since I started training. Essentially, when I started training about 10 years ago, within months I knew this is exactly what I wanted to do. Um, much to the chagrin of my parents, uh, um, several girlfriends and, and other people in my life. Uh, you know, I actually had a pretty successful career previously. I was a producer, documentary, and writer of documentaries for History Channel, Discovery Channel. Um, you know, so I did all right. Went around the world, saw a lot of cool things. But, you know, as soon as uh, jiu-jitsu and MMA entered my life, uh, just kind of spread like a virus. Uh, I'm sure many of you have experienced the same thing. Only got worse when I started teaching. Um, when I, by the time I started teaching uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, it just got worse because then I got to experience all the personal connections, friends you make, the people you help, whether it's the guy that went from 305 to 205, the cancer patient who, you know, 
was able to brave chemo because of you know the day in and out, the mental toughness that training does for you. Um, whether it's the woman who has extra confidence and can do awesome things with that confidence, like ask for a raise, uh, you know, it's pretty cool stuff what we get to do here every single day for a living. So anyway, um, I put off opening up my own place for a really long time. I made a lot of excuses in my mind, uh, things like, oh, I'm, I only have this belt. Um, I've never won that tournament. Never done that. Um, you know, basically a bunch of crap in my, in my head. Uh, by the time I finally got a black belt, I was ready to go. Um, I started researching schools all around the country, things that I thought would be awesome um, to have in my own school. Um, started saving. I actually sold my house. Um, started living very, very modestly. Um, which came in very handy when I opened up my own school. Um, it's just saving like crazy to have enough money, what, at least the amount of money I thought it would take to open up a school. Um, came up with a lot of awesome ideas, some of which have been implemented in this school today. Um, but frankly, before I opened up this place, I went to uh, an event, the first event of Lloyd held uh, in August 2010. It was an internet uh, marketing seminar that he held, one day event. And even though it was about internet marketing, um, Enough was said there to tell me that probably about 80% of what I thought I knew about running a jiu-jitsu and MMA school was dead wrong. Um, and I don't say that lightly. Um, you know, it really was a mind-blowing experience. And this is coming as a guy who was not necessarily somebody who was open to somebody like something somebody like Lloyd might have to say. Um, you know, I was definitely I wouldn't say I was a hater, um, but you know. I've gotten all the same emails that you guys have gotten. I've seen the websites. You know, constantly getting the hard sell. You're always, and for a guy like me, I, I take that as like, okay, what's really going on here? What's the upshot? I'm, how has he taken me? Well, um, I can tell you that he's not taking you. He's just, you know, he's a guy who believes in what he has to sell and wants to do everything he can to get you to buy into it. So um, it's really not all that different than running a jiu jitsu school, right? You believe you have the best school, so don't you want people to train with you? So, anyway, long story short, uh, you know, I went to the event, changed my mind a lot about things. Um, it actually upped my plan of opening a school uh, spring of 2011 to October of 2010. An opportunity presented itself to take over a school that wasn't doing so hot. Um, I just thought that I could, you know, do no wrong. Um, well, as many of you might know, anyone who's taken over an existing business, you know that the numbers aren't always what they seem to be when you take over a business. So, you know, buyer beware. You know, things happen, people leave, the students you think are going to stick around, stick around, don't stick around, and so forth. Anyway, I took over a school that had about 40 students, uh, 30 of which were actually paying, um, and an overhead of around eight grand a month. Uh, so if you can do the math, you know, the typical jiu-jitsu school charges 100 to 150 a month. You know, you can tell that I was losing a ton of money uh, in the early months. I was freaking out a little bit. Um, that being said, um, you know, I was, I'm a guy that has a lot of confidence in his abilities. Despite, you know, my lack of accomplishments in the world of jiu-jitsu, I, I kind of knew that I was a smart guy. I could make this work. I could figure it out. I knew I was a good teacher. I knew I could uh, turn out a, a quality school um, and turn out quality students who knew their, knew their stuff. Anyway, um, long story short, I've been in business about eight months. I've gone from uh, roughly that, uh, I would say, 30 to 35 paying students um, to as of tonight, which is late May 2011, 154 students, um, an income of about $3,500 a month to an income probably I'm figuring uh, uh, as of this month, eighteen five, so $18,500, just shy of uh, what uh, Lloyd would call the idiot level of school, making $20,000 a month, a month because any idiot can make $20,000 a month. So I'm almost an idiot. I'm pretty excited about it. Um, this is in eight months. Um, let me tell you, um, I've been really awful at doing what Lloyd tells me to do. Um, everything he's told me to do that I've done, I've done to the letter. Um, my problem is I'm a little bit of a slow implementer. I've done probably about 10% of what he's told to do. And I'm right now gone to the point where I'm essentially averaging 20 signups per month. My original goal when I took over the place was if I could just sign up five people a month, I could just sign up five, I'll be good. By the end of 2011, I'll have a good amount of students life will be decent. I'll be like 125 students. I'll be making this. And, um, you know, obviously you have surpassed that actually doing a very minimal amount, being kind of a lazy uh, implementer, um, if I want to be blunt about this. Um, 
you know. But doing it, I'm moving ahead. Every single day I'm trying to improve one to two percent on what I did the day before. Just keep moving forward. Doing one more thing that Lloyd has told me to do. Um, and so far, so good. It's been pretty good. I, you know, if you actually do that number, we figure 3,500 to 18,500, you'll notice that that's uh, close to a 500% increase. <laughs> um, it's pretty substantial. Um, I see some of the other guys bragging about improving their business 38% or 28% or whatever. Um, whatever, dude. All I say is, bring it on, man. I plan on keeping this uh, ratio up. I know I've got to do some serious work ahead of me, but, um, you know, come on. Dude, think about it, 500% in eight months, and you're talking about 38%, whatever. Um, I'm Rudy Fishman, no one's ever heard of me, take that. Anyway, in all seriousness, <laughs> all respect to you, Larry Shealy. Anyway, um, don't beat me up. Uh, anyway, um, you can tell I'm uh, very confident in myself. I feel really positive about my thing. And on top of that, too, some of you might be thinking like, oh, well, this guy must be all about money and, and doing doing that, um, uh, you know, uh, you know, you know, taking advantage of his students, something like no. I would say that you know, look at this banner on the wall. Whether your mission is to be a champion or just improve yourself, we are one team working together to reach our goals. That's literally something that everybody who trains here, all 154 students who train here, live, breathe, and sleep. Everybody is so. This is such a positive thing. Like, I couldn't ask for a better school. It's such a positive, family-friendly environment. Um, on top of that, our guys are doing. Awesome. For a school that has only been around for eight months, we got Pancration champions. We got a guy who's about to fight his first smoker in Muay Thai this, uh, in a week and a half. I'm sure he's going to do awesome. Um, we've had six or seven students that have started competing regularly. All have medaled every single tournament that they've done, three tournaments each. I could not be happier um, with that. So, uh, you know, you can say, like, oh, is this guy all about the money? No, because the students are performing. On top of that, we have, you know, I have one student who started out at 310 who's down now down to about 265. Um, he's been doing that for about two, two to three months now. So helping somebody in that level, I got, you know, a really healthy and solid growing women's program. I feel awesome about that. Um, you know, just seeing women get more and more confident in themselves every single day. Kids program, phenomenal. Just seeing kids turn from okay students to straight A students just because things were doing in the programs. Things that, you know, the January event that I went to, little things that Lloyd, Marcus Avalon, Jim, and, you know, Julius Park, things that they're doing in the school that I'm taking from them and implementing in my school that are turning out awesome students. Um, you know, you really owe it to yourself. If you care at all about something that, that I know is the, means everything to you, like this place means to me, you'd at least check out uh, any of the seminars that Lloyd has to offer because I guarantee you just even one day, or even I'll, I'll even say how about even three hours that you spend, that three hours is probably worth any price tag that he's offering just because it will change the way you think about what you think you know about running a jiu-jitsu and MMA school. Um, it's really, this is serious stuff, it's life-changing stuff. I've said that before uh, to a lot of people. Even today, um, I had another successful school owner, a guy who's been in business three, four years, who I discovered I'm actually making more money and have more students than. Um, kind of a little bit of a mind blur to me. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, some other things, some friends, that I'm also finding out a couple of schools that I've modeled myself after I'm actually doing a little bit better than after only eight months. Um, you know, I, I know for me, I was one of those guys that looked at a couple of schools like, if I could only be like that guy and have, you know, 150 students and be making this much a month, uh, you know, I'd be happy with that. Well, eight months, I'm already doing that. So, um, got to raise the butt bar a little bit higher. I'm definitely, I see how easy that was just doing what was told, what I was told to do. Actually, just a fraction of what I was told to do. So, um, you know, I know you people out there who are far more accomplished than me um, and been doing this a lot longer, have better systems in place already instead of some guy who's walking in this blind and just kind of guessing what you need to do just to teach seven different programs at once is doing. I know you can do just as well as I'm doing, if not better. So anyway, I challenge you to try to keep up with me because I know I'm, I'm gunning for the big dogs in the Plasta, Platinum Mastermind Group, or uh, sorry, the Titanium Mastermind Group, the guys like... I have a thousand students. Oh, I'll get there someday. But, you know, I'm hoping that next time I see you, I can say I have another hundred students. Um, and anyway, be well.